15. Sarah Gray, welcome to the show. She's now watching. <laughs> <laughs> I am watching. Welcome everybody to Let's Make Art. And we do what our name is. We make art every week. <laughs> so we are doing a watercolor project this week like we always do because that's what we're all about in our little group here is watercolor. And we are doing these wonderful rain boots. Ooh and ah at them, please. Ooh, Thank you. Ah. Some people have called them wellies. Yes. That's so cute. so cute. I like it. Okay, so we are using four colors for this project. We have rose red. We have a azure. 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 I'm going like to get that color. Describing what colors you're going to use? Azure. Azure. Somebody was real mad I didn't know the name they of that like, color. <laughs> They're like, you're teaching the class, you don't even know the name? I'm like, I'm sorry. <laughs> Three, yellow ochre, four, violet. So those are our four colors. And um, we have an outline that goes with this. If you don't subscribe and don't have the kit, you can get this outline for free on our website, letsmakeart.com. It's on there, you can just print it and paint with us using whatever supplies you have. Uh, we're using two brushes. We are using a round six and a round two. And graphite paper, if you have the subscription box, this is folded in with your postcard. So the Let's Make Art Matter postcard, it's in there. They were two separate uh, envelopes and then we just thought that was kind of wasteful. You know, we're trying to be better about that. Mm -hmm. So it's stuck in there, pull that sucker out and you will have this. Um, Let's introduce people. We have Misty here painting with us tonight. If you Hello. could do a, thank Hello. you. And we have Courtney Hello. painting with us tonight. Hello. Welcome, welcome. We have um, Keenan doing camera work. I'm back here just doing camera stuff. He's back here being a professional. <laughs> 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 and we have Brock who's managing it all. So welcome everybody. <laughs> okay, um, we're gonna start with, bef wait. Should we do, I always forget, is it outline first or oath first? Yes. Which one? Correct. Oh, that's not helpful. Oath it first because yeah. you can judge someone's outline and yeah. you should probably. You're right, we're going to oath it. it. We're going to oath it first. So everybody, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise, I promise to be kind to myself. myself. I promise to not compare my work. I promise to not compare my work. And I promise to have fun. I promise to have fun. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Also, I'm Sarah Cray. Did I even introduce myself? I don't, I don't know. know. That's my name. I talk this entire time pretty much. And I like starting with that oath because, you know, with art, we get all caught up in like, who's better? And it's not about that, okay? Art is just about creating and having fun and feeling good about yourself or taking time out for you and making something. Great. <laughs> Let's get started. We're going to start with our outline before we do our warm ups. So, uh, if you have your outline, go ahead and tape it. I like to tape it onto my paper because then it won't move while I'm tracing it and I know that, you know, my drawing won't get all wonky. And when you use your graphite paper, remember graphite paper is pretty strong. So, if you don't want super dark lines, Trace very lightly, very softly and lightly. And you can check it after you start tracing. If you do like one stroke, maybe check, check it underneath and see how light and dark that is. And if it's too dark, then just lighten it up. If it's not dark enough, press harder. And um, once watercolor hits these lines, you cannot erase them. So that's why, um, you know, try and, uh, try and be light. Now, some of you might get all worked up about being able to see pencil lines on your painting. Don't let that bother you. It used to bother me a lot too. And then I realized that literally nobody cares. Not once has anybody cared that I had pencil marks on my watercolor paintings. And if anything, it just makes your, um, you know, your painting more authentic and, you know, it's like an original painting with pencil lines. You know what I'm saying. I so know just. What you're saying. Yeah, Keenan, you know exactly yeah, what I'm saying. I'm like when you're selling your p watercolor originals, people are like, that's a legit pencil mark from Keenan. Mine, mine has so many pencil marks. Just <laughs> Nothing wrong it with that. It, that would make it more original. It would make it yours. Yes, exactly. Oh, this little glare is the shape of a heart. I didn't even notice that. Cute. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cute. 
And when you are doing this, put your boots at the bottom of your page, not at the top, because we're doing flowers. And so if you put your boots right in the middle, then you're gonna kind of cut off how much space you have. So just kind of keep that in mind. Focus time. Mm -hmm. Somebody had the brilliant idea of tracing using a colored pen or pencil. Genius. Because then you can see what you've already traced and what you haven't. I think that's a great idea. Still have yet to do it though, but I will <laughs> one day. But you will notice that I have two watercolor cups for each of us because our water gets dirty and they're like, what do you do about it? I'm like, well, you should have two, but I never actually have had two before. And then I was just like, you know what? I'm gonna be a professional. Today I mean, is I'm, today is the day. We're gonna have two water, and we have drinking glasses here too, but don't get these just confused. Good. Okay. okay, I'm all traced. And your graphite paper is totally reusable. Um, I actually like using it like older pieces because then the graphite kind of fades over time and so um, it's actually better. So just keep, just keep this little guy. Don't throw him away. Do you have an oh, I do have an eraser on the back of that wonderful pencil that Rob Appel made me. Wonderful. Or else usually I don't have an eraser. <laughs> I should. Okay. So we're gonna, oh, you ready, Courtney? We're gonna start with our warm ups before we get going. Also, look at these wonderful mints that Courtney got for me. <laughs> they're they're so cute. They're called Happy Little Mints. Aren't they cute? They're so cute. <laughs> okay, so uh, for our warm ups, we are going to start with, let's start with our flowers. We're gonna start with that. Cause I feel like our boots are pretty straightforward. We're coloring them in one color, um, but the florals and leaves are a little bit tricky. So let's take some time with those. So go ahead and grab your brush, your round six or round two, whatever you feel comfortable using. Now the wonderful thing about these round brushes is that they have a nice tip so you can do um, thin lines with them. Um, or if you press down harder, you can do thicker lines and that's perfect for florals because we want that thin to thick. And um, you want to get your paintbrush wet, but then you kind of want to hit it off the side because you don't want your paintbrush dripping. That's too much water that you have going on there. So you get your paintbrush wet, then you hit it off the side a few times and that way it gets rid of all that excess water. And we're going to pick up a color, any color you want. And then when we do flowers, and if you're part of our Facebook group or Instagram, I posted a video earlier about, uh, like a close-up video about how to do florals. But basically what you wanna do is you kinda start with like a little dot, okay? And then you're gonna do circular lines around that dot that are kinda overlapping. See how they overlap a little bit? See how they're overlapping in between? Mm -hmm. And then as you go out of the dot go far away from it, your lines are going to get longer and thicker. So you do a few layers that kind of get bigger as you go out. And then you kind of rinse your brush and then you kind of blend. You start kind of blending stuff together. Now, while you blend, you want to leave some sections white. You don't want to blend all of it. You don't want to just take your wet paintbrush and go totally across this flower because we still want those white spaces to act as kind of like highlights. And then I also like doing a few more like petal strokes around the edges using this really light wash. And if you're feeling, if you're feeling risky, yeah, well, I'm sure. You can just drop in some more color even after you spread it out and just kind of let it do its thing. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now when you get to, here Missy, let me take yours over here. So these lines are looking really good. Um, but when you get to the edge, you're going to do kind of like swoop. 
So you're gonna use, you're gonna hold your brush more horizontally and you're gonna use the side of your brush and do these large circular swoops that go around. So you see how big they are? Mm -hmm. So you just wanna like do that kind of thing as you get around to the edges, let them be nice and thick. And then these I would blend together a little bit more like that. And then I would just drop it another thing in color right there and your flower is beautiful. Of a different color or the same color in the middle? I would do the same color or, um, and this is where it kind of gets tricky with flowers um, or just painting in general is people like, they're being too edgy I would say and maybe dropping in kind of a different color, but you want it to be a color that's similar enough. So if you have the color wheel, you're gonna wanna do a color that's like right next to it on the color wheel. So I wouldn't drop in like blue to mm -hmm. this, but I could drop in maybe like mix a little violet with my red and drop that in, or maybe mix a little bit of yellow in with my red and get kind of an orange and drop that in. Okay. That's okay. But you don't wanna like go across the color wheel cause that's just like too much. Too much. It'll turn muddy. How are your florals turning out over there? Um, working on it. Here, let me see. Okay, so I think your lines are really good, but I think what's happening here, why don't you go ahead and use this brush, the, brush? The, the smaller brush. So when you do this, I can see your circular lines, which is great, that's exactly what we want. We wanna do these kind of circular lines. But you just have to keep in mind that the motion you're going for is a swoop the entire time. So first your swoops are tiny, and then your swoops get bigger as they go out. So you're gonna swoop, swoop, and then you just kinda let your swoops get bigger. And then when you add water, make sure that you are still leaving some white spaces in here. You okay. did a little bit on there, but I want more. We, okay. want, we want some nice, big, white chunks in there. Okay. And if you have two cups of water, um, there's two ways that you can do this. You can use one cup for just rinsing your brush totally and it's kind of like your dirty water cup and the other water is just clean water that you grab from. Or I saw a watercolorist who kind of separates her cups by um, color. So like one cup is for cool colors and one cup is for warm colors. I don't know if that's easier for you but that's how somebody else did it. Just giving you options. Yeah, very nice. And then you just take some water and blend those together. Let it get a little bit messy. And another, so that's one kind of flower we're gonna do. Another kind of flower is a scribble flower. Um, that's what I called it. <laughs> it's, it's called a scribble flower. So what you're gonna do is you are going to grab some color and I want you to do a scribble on your paper like a scribble, like that. So you're like, what the heck is that? It's a scribble, it's supposed to be a scribble, okay? And then you rinse your brush, and those same swoop, swoop motions that we did with the rose, we're gonna do it with our scribble flower, but we're just touching like the edges of this scribble. Like that. So you're kinda like blending that scribble out and then I'm gonna drop in some more color and kind of just let that bleed out. This is the wonderful thing about watercolor I feel is it's just like, if you saw that by itself, you'd be like, I truly don't understand what that is. But you put it with some leaves, you put it coming out of a boot, that doesn't really make sense, but you put it with like leaves and stuff and they're like, oh, that's a flower. <laughs> Solo outside of a boot. Yeah, I'm like that actually mm. isn't very helpful. <laughs> But um, basically, if you just keep that like round shape with a concentrated color center, it's gonna, gonna come across as a floral. It's there, they work really nicely with each other, so don't stress about your flowers. Yeah, scribble, scribbles and swoops, that's exactly what we're doing. So that one's fun. Um, you can practice that a couple of times. And also maybe while you're doing these warm ups, you're like, I definitely like this flower over this flower. Well then just do all of that flower. You can do whatever you want. This is your painting. So just do whatever you're um, comfortable with. Yes, very nice. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes. 
Excellent, excellent swooping. <laughs> excellent swooping by Courtney. <laughs> no, I love your voice right swoop, swoop, swoop. swoop, swoop. <laughs> okay. No, that's great. That's great. I would say the only thing for yours, Misty, is I want your swoops. See how your swoops are really like tight and mm -hmm. short over here and these ones are kind of longer? Try and make them have like similar swoop size. So if you stay with like, like, okay, there we go. There we go. You see how they're like all pretty long? Yeah. That's what we want. We don't want like tiny ones over here. Okay. So just like be nice and bold with your swooping. Okay, another flower. Another flower we're gonna do is this is kind of similar to a um, chrysanthemum. So chrysanthemums are like super layered. Like, do you remember when you were a kid, and maybe this was just me, but you made flowers by just doing this, mm -hmm. and then you would do another layer in between, and then another one. That's exactly what we're doing today. So, Perfect. I want you to go back to your elementary school days of doodling and you're going to start with just like a basic flower and then you're going to put petals um, on the, like stagger the petals. So your next layer of petals is going to go in between and then you just keep on doing that. Maybe do a little dot for a center. And remember, these aren't these are loose florals, okay? We're not going for like depth and volume here. So just kind of have fun with it. And then what I like to do is I like to like get it kind of messy because this is just a little too um, line drawy for watercolor. So I like to just get my brush wet and just kind of blend some of these areas together. Just do a few swoops around it. It's gonna get messy, it's gonna bleed, that's okay. Yes, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. And again, you might like some florals over others. Do whatever, do whatever feels right for you. This is your painting. Okay, now we're gonna practice leaves. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So for your leaves, and if you have, if you're putting colors on your butcher tray, I would suggest doing two piles of yellow of the yellow ochre because we are going to mix them with the blue to get green and we don't want to contaminate like all of our yellow so I like to do two piles and then for leaves um, I like to do I kind of outline it first so I do a curved line and then another curved line and then I just fill that baby in and that's my little leaf Yep. And then to do stems, you're going to have a more vertical hold on your brush. So your brush is going to stand more upright. And that's how you get a finer point line with round brushes. And then you're just going to do super light pressure, do your stem, and then it will come out thin. So it's like, there's my stem. And then you're going to do leaves off of that. And you can drop in some color too. I always like to drop in a little bit of darker color, kind of where that leaf meets the stem. I almost put my paintbrush oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, I, it's not. No, I thought you were telling me. me. Okay. Me. Missy, um, I'm going to move this away from you. I'm just going to move this over a smidge and I'll be fine. What if I put this in that? Perfect. So it's like blue tape, don't touch it. <laughs> Sorry, Sarah. <laughs> it's okay. I don't think these paints would even hurt me. It's fine. Who hasn't accidentally <laughs> ingested paints? That's what I would like to know. Yeah. <laughs> Keenan, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Oh, we're there. <laughs> so, and then the the difference between leaves, like the variations between them is you can make your leaves smaller or you can make them a little bit longer and skinnier, but it's essentially going to be the same thing, which is like if I wanted to make mine smaller, I just do the same thing except do it smaller, a little curved line, another little curved line, fill that little baby in and then do a stem. So these are my cute little leaves. 
If you want to make them long and thin, same thing, except you're just going to make them longer. So it's going to be like, there is a top leaf. Here's my stem, leaf, leaf, like so. Okay, Courtney, one thing that I'm noticing about your stems here, if it's okay. Uh, also, I would just like to say that it's your painting, so maybe I'm going to say this to Courtney and she's going to be like, forget you, I want to do my stems that way. That's cool. I won't be offended at all. But I've noticed that yours, curvy? they're a little bit um, curvy. Uh, yes. Okay. So, and this is what you're going to want to do, is you're going to want to do either a couple curlies or you're going to want to do like one big curl like that. But stems actually, like, the entire thing has a curve to it if it gotcha. does. So it's going to be more of like... An arch. Yes, exactly. And that's just going to read a little bit more... Okay, stemmy. Yes. Courtney, I like your, your leaf stems. You can like them. Thank you you, you can like them. I, I, was, I was just saying. <laughs> just in a watercolor class <laughs> that I had, somebody said they looked like little swimmers. Little swimmers. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, how do I get that oh, not to happen? <laughs> I thought they looked cool as like vines on a yellow pair of boots. They could be viney. I like the vines. Yeah. The vines do have the curved lines. If that's what you're going for, then keep them. You okay there, Brock? <laughs> He's doing great. <laughs> Wonderful. Okay, yeah, Rebecca, if you liked the curly stems, don't, don't change just for me, okay? Do, do it for you. Courtney, if you like your curly, <laughs> if you like your curly stems, keep up. This is your painting. It's your life. <laughs> okay, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we should really kind of go over before uh, we get our colors going, our painting going. I think we're good to go. I'm ready. Are you guys ready? You bet. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Move your scratch paper to the side. Maybe keep it handy if you want to test out colors or something before. Actually, I'm going to keep mine closer. So, now there are four steps to this boot. So step one, we are going to fill in the boot color. Step two, we're going to kind of blend out our glares on our boots. Step three, we're gonna put in our florals and leaves. And step four is blending in those final details that kind of tighten things up. Now, if you noticed, these boots that we're painting are kind of black, but we don't have black on our palette. And you're like, how do you do that? And it's like, you just mix all of the colors together and they are gonna turn this dark, muddy color. So, and the great thing about mixing a black as opposed to using straight black is that straight black, if you lighten it, because we're going to add a little bit of water here for the glare, it just is gray. And when you mix your black, then other colors are going to kind of come through. And you might not think that's true to nature, but it is true to nature. All black has um, like a, a slightly different color to it. Like if you look at black dogs in the sun, like the highlight is actually kind of more of a bluish color. So um, keep that in mind. But if you do have black and it's just easier for you to use black, I don't think there's anything wrong with using black. Some watercolors are like, I never use black. And I'm like, cool. <laughs> so if you want to use it, use it. I don't care. Sometimes I use it just because it's easier. And maybe I want it to be gray when I add water, you know? Okay. Oh, I've already broken my rule of rinsing in both cups. That's okay. I'll get better about it. So we're going to take a swoop. So we have four colors, and we're going to take a swoop of all of the colors, and we're going to put it in the middle to make our black. Now, as you're mixing, you're going to be like, oh, our paper towel ate up all of our yellow yeah, ochre. I tried to make a wall here because our colors were bleeding together. Didn't work. Now the reason why my color, me and Missy's colors are bleeding so much together is because we put a lot on our palette and that's because we're sharing. So we're like, let's put a ton of paint on there and then they just bleed all together. So don't put this much paint on your palette. You don't, you don't need that much. I 
Okay. Now, um, if your black or your brown mixture, whatever color, is reading too much of one color and you want to tone it down, you're just going to use the colors complement. So this is reading really, really purple. So we're just going to take a little bit of yellow ochre and add that to the mix. And that's going to automatically tone down that purple. So now it's like this brown color. And I'm going to add an extra swoop of blue to mine because I like that my boots had this kind of blue undertones. And then you want to make sure that your brush is loaded with this paint. And then you are just going to start putting it in it, putting it in your boot. How's your color coming? Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of red in there okay. to tone down that green. Okay. And then you can add some blue. There you go. Now, you might have to do a few layers of this to get it nice and dark. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay your phone will out. Thanks. Was that your phone? Yeah. I think they wanted me to be really worried about it. Misty, it's okay. <laughs> Listen, I'm the boss here. Don't let these people intimidate you. I wasn't. Brock's been louder with his chair. So. Yeah, I know. Um, also remember these outlines are a guideline. So if you, like, I accidentally went way outside of my line on this boot, don't stress. I just kind of shifted the entire edge of my boot and it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. Now avoid these spots that I have kind of highlighted, these outline spots. You want to avoid those because those are going to be our glare. And um, this project has been super fun. If you're part of our Facebook group, Let's Make Art Together, um, people have been doing so many different versions of this project. Um, you all have been seeing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're what's so cute. So, Missy, what's your favorite one? I just love the ones with the red boots. The like, red boots, yeah. like the Christmas, Christmassy ones, or, or just, just red? Just, just red wellies. I just, yes. They're so cute. They are so cute. Courtney, you said earlier that you loved the one with the ornament on it. Yeah, that was fun. I loved that one, too. I love the ones where people are putting stuff like sticking out of them, like somebody did a snowman. Mm -hmm. Yes. And the elephant with the little umbrella. So great. Adorable. You guys are so creative. I love it. So anyways, that just goes to show that you can do whatever you want with this painting. Mm -hmm. There's so many different versions. Somebody did one where their flowers were super like spring colored. They were like peachy pink and they looked like peonies. Peonies? Peonies. peonies. So pretty. <laughs> they were so pretty. Keenan, you're supposed to know how to pronounce stuff, okay? That's gonna be your I'm job. I'm sure I've said several times I can't pronounce <laughs> words correctly. Well then great. I can barely say Wellington. Wellington? Those Wellington boots. Oh, is that what wellies are short for? Yes. You learn something new mm -hmm. every day. I mean, I could give you more facts about Wellington. Uh, if you could please look up three facts about <laughs> Wellingtons, that would be great. I got those three facts, I'm not going to lie. Do you really? Uh, yes. Wonderful. Keenan, you're doing so great with your job. Hit Thank us you. with a fact. Well. <laughs> oh, wait, did you lie to me when you said that you no, had them? I just, they're not very interesting. Oh, <laughs> I will be the judge of that. Okay. The Wellington boot was originally a type of leather boot adapted from Hessian boots. Hessian boots? Yes. Hmm. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a, sort of like the groundhog fact. What's the groundhog fact? You mainly stay on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> no, that wasn't groundhog, that was hedgehog. <laughs> okay. You guys, watch that hedgehog tutorial and you are going to have some... Treats in there from Keenan. Great Thank tutorial. You. Okay, so I'm doing kind of another layer on my boots. They're kind of coming across as a little bit green. I'm not mad about that. I like green. If you don't like green and you want to get rid of it, put some red on there. Mm -hmm. 
Now, Courtney, for yours, I'm going to have you, I'm going to mix more paint on yours. And let me just bring it to the middle so people can see here. Yes, because I have two different colors now. I don't mind the two different colors, but it's coming off really light. And one of the reasons could be because you have too much water on your brush. And another one could be that you're just not picking up enough paint when you're putting it down. Okay. Yeah, because I'm pretty dry. So, yeah, you want to make sure that your paint is smooth when you, when you um, apply it but you also want to make sure that it's filled with paint. So I'm going to give you some extra colors here. How are you on red? Do you need more red? <coughs> so if you notice that your boots aren't very dark and they're coming across more as a gray, then try and a, uh, sorry for the tapping. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, then try and mix just more paint and have your paintbrush loaded a little bit more okay. with that paint. Um, friends, I know you're having trouble with these tops of these bottles. We are not using them for next month, okay? We are, they're kaput, they're dead to us. We're not using them. So don't worry, just hang in there with us. We'll, uh, we'll get it all situated. Okay, that's more. Okay, and don't forget to do the little bottom part of your boot also. How are you no, getting your so dark? I'm just doing a lot of layers. I've probably done two or three layers on this. Okay. This also might be when you're just frustrated with having to do so many layers that you grab your black paint. Understandable, <laughs> understandable. Okay, I feel good. I feel good about this boot. I'm gonna move on to my second one. Now, when you do the second one, you are going to leave a tiny, tiny, little, thin, white line in between. You see that? See this tiny, mm -hmm. little? Just leave a little bit one right there in the middle. If you don't, that's okay. You just have to make sure that this boot behind is darker right there where that line meets to show that they're different. Um, if you have them the same value right next to each other, it's not going to come across that they're two different boots. Oh, ooh, I almost forgot that line. Don't worry, I remembered last second. Good save. Thank you. Thank you, Keenan. You're welcome. Keenan, I'm glad you're here. Me too. It's really fun. <laughs> it's a great time. Oh, Amelia traced the boot on the wrong side of her paper. I'm sorry, Amelia, that happens to the best of us. Also, if I can tell you how many times I've traced an image without graphite paper underneath, and so when I thought I was done, I lifted it up and there was nothing there, that has definitely happened to me before too. That would be so disappointing. It is so disappointing, because like tracing it is like the least fun part. Because, you know, you just want to start painting and then you're like, yes, now I can finally start. And then you're like, nope, I got to do it all over again. Wow, this boot is really multicolored here. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not mad about it. <laughs> Somebody said they're using I'm not mad about it in all aspects of their life. And that just makes me so happy. It should, with good reason. How's it getting darker over there? Yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. And you could even change this rain boot. Uh, I saw a green. Oh, I've, I saw the green. Yeah, the green looked really good. Somebody did a violet, or no, a blue, I think. And that one looked really good also. Was it azure? <laughs> yes, it was azure. Blue, I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm just smoothing out this line. Yeah, look at those guys. Oh, 
Oh, um, Eileen asks, how do you know what's the right side of the paper? Now this paper, it's a little bit more difficult to tell, but you wanna paint on the side that has more texture, the side that's a little bit more rough. And sometimes feeling it is, I don't know, sometimes I kinda get confused between them while I'm feeling it, I don't know why. So I actually use the glare of the light to see which side has more texture of it, texture on it, and that's the side you're gonna wanna paint on. So you might, if, if that's helpful for you, that's how I do it, is I just look in the light. Now, like thicker, heavier papers that are a heavier weight, there is an obvious difference between the back and the front. Gosh, I love that my rainbow boots is like red and green and brown and blue. It's so, did I say rainbow boots? Mm -hmm. You did. You did. <laughs> I mean, it's I mean, accurate. kind of, it yeah. is, it is. I'm not wrong. Mine is just so green. You can do some layers of red on That's top of I it if it's bothering you. Yeah. yeah, my front one is pretty green, but I'm actually okay with that. And I do have a little thin line. You don't have to have the, the white thin line in between go all the way. You actually don't want it to go all the way in between because that's actually going to separate them too far. So you just wanna do like maybe a hint here, maybe a tiny bit down here, but you don't want the entire thing a white outline. Heavy sigh. Heavy sigh from Brock. <laughs> we all heard it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Has anyone painted rainbow boots yet? Ooh, good question, Ooh. Susan. Everybody always does. Somebody always does a rainbow version of our project. Wait, what did we do last week? Fall landscape? Totally somebody did a rainbow version. Um, I haven't seen one for the boots yet, though. Down. They'll do it. They will. They will. I know they will. Um, yeah, you, because we're doing so many layers, this is quite a bit of paint. Don't stress out. Okay. Yes. Excellent. Wonderful. That's step one. Are you guys ready to move on? Sure. Great. We're moving on. Step two. We're going to kind of, so we have the glare in our boots but we kind of want to soften them up a little bit because some parts are gonna be nice, that bright white, the white of the paper, but some of them actually are diffused a little bit because there's almost a transition between the glare and then the dark of the boot. So I want you to rinse your brush. And then like along this super thick white line, I just want you to go along the left side and just kind of blend out some of this, try and soften that line just a little bit. And if they kind of touch, that's okay, like in between, but we're just trying to soften this line to get a, a, like a medium value in there, right? We have our super dark value, that's our boot. Our light value is the white of the paper and we need some mid-tones in there. So I'm just gonna kind of blend these out a little bit, soften them up. I'm gonna do it on the top too. And then along like these glares. Oh, I missed an outline over here. That's okay. So it's just like a quick, just like swoosh through, softening up some of that glare. And if you kind of have to work it a little bit more to blend it, you kind of just work your brush back and forth across that line, move that color. It doesn't have to be a strong color that's going in. It's just, you know, again, softening that line a little bit. Now the next thing that we're going to do after you kind of soften the glares on your first boot is I actually want you to lift a little bit of color up on the very, you know, the like top of this boot right here where like the front of your foot would be. I want you to take your brush and we're gonna lift some of that color out because um, we want, oh, sorry, Missy. Right. We want it to be lighter, but we don't want like a full highlight on that. 
So just using my wet brush, I'm just going to swoop it out and then I wipe it on my paper towel and then I just keep on swooping until it's a lighter color. And if you have to like wet your brush a couple of times, get that area wet and swoop it a couple of times, that's okay. But yeah, just a nice little lift up of color is a good way to kind of get, yeah, a different, a different value in there, which is exactly what we want. Excellent. And now we're gonna kind of do the same thing with our back glares. We're gonna blend some of those out. Now these ones, I, I'm gonna blend just about all of them out except for like half of one. I'm gonna leave a little bit of a glare still on that one. Yes. And so hopefully with this super strong range of the dark value of the boot to the white glare, they're gonna come off that nice rubbery uh, texture that we want because rubbery has that like plastic sheen to it. So there's gonna be a lot of light reflecting off of it, which is why we have so many glares. And maybe do the, the same thing on the top of this back boot, lift up some of that color. Just do a little swoop and lift up some color. Man, this is coming like a really great dark green and I love it. Oh, that's pretty. It's pretty. Where on the back did you do it? I just did oh, it on the it. same area, just on that back boot. Okay. Just kind of where the front of the foot would be. How are your glares coming? I have no idea. They're coming great. They're doing great. <laughs> you, you're gonna, you're being hard on yourself. You might. I did not say I'm, I didn't say anything. <laughs> you're right, Missy. You're right. <laughs> I was reading too much into your tone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I did that. Uh, this might be frustrating to you, but when we put in the flowers, it's gonna come together. Okay, so just hang in there, you guys. You're doing great. Oh, I missed this part for three black too, huh? Yeah, it's okay. I mean, you can do that in right now, just really quick. We got time. Well, it could be red. You can do a red little buckle strap. <laughs> Keenan, living on the edge, putting some red in there. Living on the edge. <laughs> okay. I'm ready to put in, I'm ready to go to step three. I'm ready to do my florals and my leaves. So hopefully you guys are ready too, because that's what we're doing. Um, now, when you do your bou bouquet coming out of your boots, I want you to keep a couple things in mind. Number one, it's so much easier to put your larger flowers and leaves in first and then work down from there. Um, number two, you want your stems, see how the direction of my stems are going kind of following as if it was like splaying or spraying out. You guys, please agree with me. Mm -hmm. yes. yep. Thank you, Absolutely. thank you, thank you. Nice. Wonderful. Nice. You don't want your stems to go completely vertical, straight up and down, because what that is going to do, it is the viewer eyes, who's ever watching it, is going to follow that line that you're creating and just go straight off the page. So you kind of want to keep them looking at your flowers. So that's why we kind of like direct them, be like, oh, follow your eye from here to the other side. And it's very nice, you know? So keep that um, kind of direction going when you add your stems and your flowers. You want to keep that. Yes, you guys know what I'm saying. Okay. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. No, if there is, I will remember and tell you. Okay. So I'm going to start with putting my flowers in first. And I'm gonna do kind of a rose-like flower first. I'm gonna mix some of my violet with some of this crimson. And I'm gonna get this like pretty magenta-y color. Right, that's kind of a magenta. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then I'm just going to do like how we did in our warm-ups. Overlapping curved lines that get thicker and lighter as they go out. You rinse it and then you just use water to blend that baby. Now, when you're blending water out, or you're using water to blend, the longer you wait to blend, the harder it is going to be to blend those lines. So that's why I try and work pretty fast with the flowers, is 
I don't, I don't, if, if one little line gets messed up, I don't stress about it because I know I'm going to cover it with water anyway. So you're just going to put those lines in quick and then you're going to do your swoops with your water and blend that out. And then I'm going to drop in just strong color right in that middle, do a couple swoops with that. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yep, and then grab some water. Quick, 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 grab it, swoop it. Yes, and I would rinse your brush one more time and do it on the very outside of it, yeah. Leave some white spaces in between two, yes. Just do a little boop, boop. Fabulous, fabulous, okay. So there is my little rose. I'm gonna do a squiggle flower over here. Maybe you didn't like the squiggle flowers. Don't do that one. Or maybe that's the only one you liked. <laughs> that's okay. Again, your painting. You're painting your life. I'm gonna do a similar color. I'm gonna add a little bit more crimson to it though to give it more of a pink. And I'm gonna do it kind of over here, kind of in the middle between these two. Just a little scribble. Rinse my brush and then swoop it out. And depending on how big you want it to be is how much you will keep going with those swoops. Sometimes flowers get a little, go, get a little away from me because I just keep on swooping, but that's okay, there's large flowers. And then I'm just gonna drop in some color in the middle of my little scribble and let that kind of bleed out and do its thing. Yep, yep. Okay, now we are going to do our, uh, you know, our elementary school flower here. And this one, I'm adding a little bit of my yellow ochre with the crimson to get kind of a orangey, kind of a warm red going on. You can do whatever color your heart desires though, because this is your painting. And I'm kind of coming off this way is where I'm gonna kind of start my little Flowers, petals, just layers. And then you get your brush wet, swoop it out. And some of you um, might be thinking I'm going really fast right now and I understand that, but sometimes I like it when we go fast because then it kind of forces you to make decisions quickly and sometimes it's better to make decisions quickly than to kind of hmm and ha the entire time and kind of be afraid to put stuff places. So don't be afraid to just kind of like go for it. And remember, it's just paint and paper. There's more where that came from. So if you don't like it, you can order more. <laughs> what? More There's more where that came from at letsmakeout.com. <laughs> <laughs> And you could just get more and do this a billion times. Okay. So I have my three larger florals in. I'm going to do, I'm gonna do a, another rose, but I'm gonna kinda do it from the side. And that essentially is the same thing except you work up one more side more than the other. So I'm gonna start with my like concentrated center. Okay, this is where I'm, and then I'm gonna start overlapping. And then see how I'm kind of working up the one side more? Oh, yeah. So that's how it looks like it's turned away from us. And then I just blend it out. So there's my center. So yeah, the flower is at like an angle because it's turning. Oh, that's such a pretty color there. I love it. And now is where you can start putting in your larger leaves. So you can grab some green. I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna pour us some extra blue because it, it got right in that purple. And 
And uh, this is where you guys can kind of, you know, I mean, uh, you can follow along with me, no problem. But also, if you just kind of want to go and do your own thing, you know, do it. You don't have to follow exactly where my leaves placement is if you don't want to. So I'm going to start with like a big leaf over here. Kind of have it come out. So again, my stem is not completely vertical. It has a curve to it. It's going off to the left-hand side. And you can make your leaves totally symmetrical. You can make them asymmetrical. And all that means is if symmetrical is when it's mirrored, asymmetrical is when it's not mirrored. So if I add a, a leaf right here, these leaves are more symmetrical. But if I do like a tiny one here and one coming this way, it is no longer symmetrical. So play around with it. You could even have like another little stem coming off. Kenan, can you please present fact number two about Wellington boots? I'm gonna have to reload the page. I got discouraged. <laughs> you mean you weren't one. you weren't ready? I wasn't a hundred percent. Uh, the person who made them popular and wore them frequently was Arthur Wellesley, first Duke of Wellington. Arthur Wellesley, thank you for doing that for us. Because who doesn't love a good Wellington boot? That's what I would like to know. Appropriate accent. Thank you. <laughs> Winnie says she loves the colors on my boot. Thanks, Winnie. And each flower doesn't totally need a stem because it's gonna get kind of messy in there as we add more leaves and as we do all this stuff. So actually what I like to do is I like to do my leaves first and then if there's like a white space, then I'll add in a stem, but it's not totally important that there's stems because it's gonna get kind of messy in here a little bit wild. So don't stress out. Yeah, very nice. My stem got way too thick over here. <laughs> I got excited. That's okay, Misty. Mm. Thick stems, they're a thing. It's fine. It is fine. Um, I'm gonna do kind of another thing coming out over here, maybe a little bit longer. You guys want to know something exciting? Yes. I saw an order come through the other day, and it was my uh, uh, 11th grade English teacher. Oh, yes. oh that's my... the sweetest. <laughs> Her name popped up, and I was just like, oh my gosh, that was my teacher. And I'm like, I wonder if she knows that it's me. I she does. She, does. <laughs> she totally does. <laughs> she sent me a message. She's like, just subscribed. Proud of you. Way to go. Oh, that's so awesome. Miss Purdy. That's her name, Miss Purdy. She was so nice. She actually, for a short period, had me considering being an English teacher instead of an art teacher. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Okay, I also want to kind of change the, sh the color of my leaves a little bit because these are all kind of a very similar green, and I love variation in my colors. So I'm going to go with more of a yellow green. So I'm just going to grab a little bit more of that yellow ochre and that's gonna turn it to like a more of a brownish green, which I'm okay with because leaves do have that color. Or you can add more blue in there and get more of a blue green. Totally up to you, it's your painting. You can make these decisions. I actually also had a friend who I went to art school with 
um, her and her mom do these paintings together and it's so wonderful. She sent me a picture of them doing the fall or the autumn lake right before. That makes me so happy. That's awesome. She's a great artist. She does um, abstract art and it's beautiful. I love abstract art. Do you guys love abstract art? I do. It's my favorite kind of art. So I'm just gonna keep filling on my leaves around here. I'm kind of changing the colors and shapes as I go around. There's no like right or wrong way in terms of like doing what first. Again, I try and just do the larger pieces first and then do smaller ones after that. But that's really the only kind of advice I have for you besides that. You can kind of just put them in wherever you want. Okay, somebody asked, do you place your little finger on the paper to stabilize your brush as you paint? Let me see that more. No smearing of paint. So um, when I'm doing small, I do kind of rest my wrist while I'm painting these kind of smaller. Sarah, if you move that cup, I can get a close look at how your hand is. Which, which cup? Oh, we, have, no. we have so many cups. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I do kind of rest my my wrist, but I also kind of move, like work around it so I'm not resting it in the paint. So like this one, my wrist is kind of like up to the side so it's not landing in any paint. And then I'm gonna kind of put it in. And then when I get farther down and I put in my stem, I'm actually gonna keep my wrist lifted up to put the stem in so I don't smear anything. And that is gonna take practice. Your hand might be a little bit shaky at first. Don't. Don't um, get mad at yourself for it. It just takes a little bit of practice to do that. So it's just gonna be like here. But I 100% still, even years of watercoloring, I still plant my wrist and paint sometimes and get little paint dots smeared. And that's very frustrating, so know that you're not alone. And if you have a Mr. Clean Magic Eraser, that can help you pick up some of that um, smeared paint. Okay, and I'm gonna put in a cute little yellow kind of black-eyed, are they called black-eyed Susans? Um, the ones that have like yellow with the I black center. So. Yeah. I don't know, I am not a plant expert. Me, I wish I was. I wish I was too. Okay. It's so funny that neither of you are plant experts. <laughs> Cause our husbands are like so into plants. Yes. I guess that's true, I was like, why? Yeah. <laughs> so confused. Why would we be plant experts? <laughs> Her husband and my husband they are, are very much into their plants and plants in general. And they talk about plants together. They talk about plants together every day, yes. all the time. They actually work together in the film studio. And the other day, um, Michael's like, what would be the worst thing that happened to our film studio? I'm like, if all of your plants died. And he just started laughing and he's like, yes, that <laughs> you're right. Besides that. Besides that. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I just did little petals. They're just kind of like, if I were pretending to do an entire flower, it's just the bottom part. So they just kind of spread out from there. And then you do like, I'm just using the same kind of dark that I use for my boots. I'm just gonna do a nice little top on that. Uh, Kelly said, Sarah, I noticed that you don't tear your page out of your book before painting. Is there a reason for this? Is it not good to tape it down? Um, so for me, Kelly, um, I like to keep it in my book because it's glued. So at least one side is kind of taped down. So that way I don't really need to tape it. I noticed that when I rip out and paint on a single page, um, it tends to warp a little bit more than I would maybe want it to. Now for paintings that are super water heavy, like the landscape we did last week, that one, you do want to tape down all four sides because it's so heavy with water that it is going to warp your page. But this one I don't feel like is that heavy, so I was okay just leaving it the one side glued in. Okay, and then I'm going to do little, um, you can do little like bud flowers kind of along the edge. I like adding these in because it gives me a little bit of color along the 
um, edge of the florals instead of just having all of the flowers like in the center and then just green on the edges. It's kind of fun to have little pops of color in there. And I kind of just put them, you're just gonna keep on adding leaves until it doesn't feel so bare. So you're just gonna keep on going. That's pretty. Corny's playing with different on her scratch paper. Willow. Yeah. <laughs> if I knew what a pussy willow looked like, I could probably help you, but I have no idea. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's this wonderful plant that has it looks like little bunny tails on it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. I don't know what that I is. still can't they picture it, but I know what bunny like, tails look like, like, so they're like sticks. Yeah, they're just, they're just little, like, fluffs. Oh. Little of fur. They yeah. look like they're very furry. Yeah. What color is the, or is it's it like white. white? Brown. brown? Little pumps are white. Okay. But they could be brown. The nice thing about painting is I just paint random flowers however I think and then I'm like there's got to be a flower out there that looks like that so I'm good there's so many different kinds you know yeah Keaton are you ready for uh fact number three uh, is there a third I have a pretty cool fact okay I'm ready think. I'm ready so it's a roundabout fact so the Wellingtons were created to be entirely waterproof right okay and as occupational health and safety requirements were grew, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they started to implement steel toes in the Wellingtons, which introduced steel toe boots. Really? What would steel toes in them do? They weren't for Wellington boots. <laughs> Sorry, should I not have asked that question? I Sorry. I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> Why would you know that? I what, don't know. What would they do? Yeah, like for rain, like for no, waterproof. No, they just made the boots safer for like construction workers. So they just put steel toes okay. in Wellingtons. Were Wellingtons originally used in construction zones? <laughs> <laughs> Do I just keep on asking you questions? You, I'm sorry, no. Keenan. <laughs> no. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Keenan is just like, why are fact. you asking me all of this? I don't know. <laughs> I literally just Googled this. Keenan, <laughs> uh, you're a good sport. But that was the third fact. Third so fact. We're done Ex with that. Excellent fact. I won't ask you anymore. Thank you. <laughs> you're like, I can't handle this. <sighs> Maybe somebody else knows. You guys, if anybody here watching as an expert on the history of Wellington boots, let us know what the deal is with the steel toes. I feel like this should definitely be part of Keenan's job every week to like research <laughs> random facts. Keenan, if you can write a thousand page essay on every subject that we paint every oh. week, and then you could just read it as we're painting, that would just be great. Can I add that onto stuff you already do, do, please? I can do that. <laughs> what are you busy doing of their stuff? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you might be now. Editing, filming all of this, <clears throat> working your other job, it's fine. Your family, you don't need to see them. I think my wife is watching this, so we're basically hanging out right now. Uh, you know what? This is actually considered like a date almost. Yeah, exactly. Suzanne. <laughs> Keenan seems to be having a great time on his date. I hope you're having a good time. She's probably thinking, I have the children. <laughs> I should be asleep. That's true. Kids. I, have, I have like 18 kids. <laughs> you do not. You do not. They're cute. Okay, and I'm adding tiny little, little stems. These ones are like, oh, they came out purple. I'm cool with that. 
Oh, that's fun, actually. It is fun, Missy. That's what we're all about I really here. Love it. Purple leaves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh wait, I'm on. Why don't you? Why don't you tell me how you really feel, Courtney? <laughs> You're having fun, I know it. I can I tell know, by I your. <laughs> I think my mom is the, uh, when she was ever irritated, she would um, breathe heavy, like sigh really heavy. <sighs> and so whenever somebody does that, I'm like, why are you upset? What am I doing? <laughs> Brock actually tends to do it a lot. And I'm just like, oh no, he's hating everything right now. Something bad's about Sometimes that's just how Brock breathes. <laughs> that's just how Brock breathes. Yes. I'm learning that. Heavy. 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 <laughs> also another fun fact, um, somebody asked me in the last tutorial if I was expecting. Uh, I, what? Yeah, that's nice. I just like to say that maybe I just have a wonderful glowy complexion right now. So thank you for that. <laughs> but no. <laughs> I'm not expecting. Just that I'm just gonna. Out. I'm gonna clear that up right now. That was pretty funny though. I laughed. Need a good support. Maybe I cried a little bit at first, but <coughs> then I laughed. <laughs> it's fine. I'm fine. It's great. Okay. Now I'm starting to get kind of filled out here. My I got a lot of leaves going on. I got all these different directions, colors, textures. It is looking good. Now I'm gonna show you guys a little trick to make this seem a little bit more full. Yes. Because even though I have a lot coming out, you're just like, there's still some white spaces in between here. So what I like to do, and you'll notice it right here, is I actually blend some of these colors together right here, mm. and that is what gives it that full look, like there's way more. Because like, if you see a bouquet together, there's so many different layers of stems and sticks and colors that it kind of is like just this bundled mess, and it's filled. There's not a lot of white spaces kind of where it's all gathered together. So that's what we're gonna try and do here, and then that's gonna give us that more complete look as if there's a lot of greenery behind that we just don't see. So all you have to do for that is you're gonna take your brush, you're just gonna kind of get it wet, and then you're just going to start smearing using the color that's already there. Now it has been a long time since we painted these stems, so if they're not smearing a lot, you're free to drop in a couple of colors to kind of smooth it out now. But you want the smearing to be a smooth transition up, right? We don't want to just like leave this like that really strong line right there. So you're just gonna keep on kind of blending it out until it's like a barely there green, and then you're just gonna kind of stop. So you want it to be kind of a smoother transition. And already just by kind of smearing that together, it's like, oh, there's lots of different things going on behind there that we can't totally see. And then, but if you still want to keep some of your shapes that we just blended out, wait for this to dry and then go back over it and re-put in those leaves and stems and just kind of tighten that up. And then um, it will be more like that full look. I'm going to try and do it right now. Now it's kind of wet still, so it might not come across, but I'm just going to put in a leaf, another little leaf, a stem. Whoa, that leaf got way big. I didn't even notice that till right now. There we go, so it gives us that full look. Oh, Karen wants to know if these liquid watercolors are light fast. Light fast just means that if you put them in direct sunlight, they will not fade. And because liquid watercolors are dye based, they are not light fast. Um, you would wanna go with pigment based paints and um, 
if you're looking at them, it will tell you if they're light fast or not. For me as an illustrator and someone who kind of just paints for fun and then all the paintings go in a drawer, um, I care more about color vibrancy because dyed base paints tend to be more vibrant as opposed to the pigment based paints. So that's why I like to go with those. But I just want to say that like whatever materials you choose as a watercolor artist, there's nothing wrong with it. If you like a different kind of paper, that's totally okay. If you like the pigment based paints or the tube paints instead of the liquid, understandable. If you like different brushes, that's okay. You're gonna find what works for you. Everybody is gonna have their own preferences and I don't think there's a right or wrong. For me, I like Canton paper, which is not super expensive paper. It's actually really affordable. And that's what I personally like and use in my work. But other watercolorists are like, no, I'm only using heavyweight block paper and that's fine too. So just don't, don't, uh, just don't judge other people for what supplies they use. You know what I'm saying? Cause I just feel like it's a personal choice. So it's like, let that person do what they want. You know, don't, don't think that, don't get all uptight about different supplies, you know, cause everybody's going to have different preferences or want different things. So it's not a big deal. Okay, so I blended it out and then um, I'm just gonna kind of put in my little buckle over here, my buckle color, and then I'm gonna be like done, I feel. But the last step, like doing this detail step, is always a good spot to look at your painting, see if there's anything you can change or adjust or add. Maybe there's a white space up here that's bothering you that you wanna fix. It's totally up to you. Yes, if it's helpful to take a step back, do that. I'm at a table sitting down, so I'm not going to, but I do that in painting all the time where I kind of like look at it from farther away. It gives you a better idea of composition and color. You could even put in like some veins on your leaves. You can do this little detail work at the end there. And for your people who don't know what block watercolor paper is, is basically, so you see how this is glued down on the pad at the top? A block, all sides are glued down. Oh. oh interesting. So, or like, there's one that I'm using right now, actually, that I'm just trying out to see if we should have it in the store. I think it's called Stonehenge paper. I'm not sure. But only this, the two sides are glued down and the top and bottom are not. So there's a couple different ways that you can do it that there is, but that's what a block is, is when it's the whole thing is glued down. And that's really great because then it's not going to uh, warp while you're painting. I'm just going to put in my dark little buckle right here. And then you can just like make it a gray because it's kind of a silver color. And that's it. Awesome. They look great. How do you guys feel? We did it. We did it. Fabulous. We painted it. We took time out for ourselves. It was wonderful. We learned some interesting things about Wellington <laughs> boots, <laughs> courtesy of Keenan. Thank, Thank you. you so let's, uh, let's hold them up and show them to Keenan. He's going to do a slow pan across. I think mine needs more stuff. Yeah, maybe a little bit more stuff, or you can blend a little bit. But maybe you can just, you know. Maybe I can just leave it. Maybe you can just leave it if you want. I'm not going to tell you what to do again. <laughs> <laughs> Alex said this, and everybody commented. They're like, I liked, they're like, I liked her curly cute. And I was just like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are you ready, ladies? Yeah, we're ready. Yes, All right, we're ready, bro. Oh, it's Brock was ready before we were. Brock, you're ready to go. Wait, do a. Oh, yeah, there you go. Do the candid. Ready? That's Wait, yeah, tell me, ready. tell we're me ready. when you're ready. We're, we're beyond ready. You're already in frame. All of you. <laughs> you okay, so we're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. Misty, do your candid. <laughs> no, it's Madam Alderman. <laughs> Madam Alderman, please. Madam Alderman, woman. Alder woman. Alder woman. That Thank was you. great. Okay. I hope you guys watch that. Um.
If you guys painted this, please post it. It's so hard putting your work out there. I totally understand it's scary because you're afraid that people are gonna be like, that's not very good. First of all, nobody does that. Not once has anybody commented on anything that I've seen and been like, no. So that's all in your head, okay? Second of all, people like to see other people create. They like it when other people are vulnerable. It gives them permission to be vulnerable. And it's just a really wonderful thing to do. Also, it's fun to see what other people paint. We have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Together where people, are, where people post all the projects that we've done. They kind of do different takes on it. It's so fun to go see, so go ahead and join that. It's a really wonderful community. If you post this on Instagram, tag us in it. We would love to see it. Let's Go Make Art is our Instagram name. And um, take a look at other people's and just kind of keep in mind that the point of being able to look at other people's art is you can just see how people do it their way. All of our colors are different. All of our flowers and leaves are different. All of these things. And you can learn from other people by seeing how they do it also. So do it. You guys are awesome. Next week, we are doing our give thanks. Yay! So That's cute. Fun. I love it. We're going to do some brush lettering. So um, the tutorial for this will be released tomorrow. And Nicole, who I kind of introduced you guys to while she was here, she is with doing that tutorial with me, showing us how to do brush lettering um, with our paints and with our brushes. And it's going to be so fun. So that's going to be next Tuesday at 7.15. Do I need to say anything else? That's it? OK, thanks, you guys. Bye. Bye.